Hey what's up guys, welcome to the video and today I'm going to be taking you through my upper body warm up that I use before I hit the weight. Now, are you that person that goes into the gym, slaps on their working weight and starts repping it out without even doing any sort of preparation? I used to be that person, but as I grew older I learned to appreciate a proper and effective warm up. In short, it primes your body, making sure that you... As I was saying, um, what it does, it helps prime your body, uh, preparing it for the weight that it's about to take, including your central nervous system, your skeletal system, and just improving blood flow so that you're not gonna injure yourself. Now, let's go to the gym and run through what I do before I hit my upper body workout. All right, so we're at the gym now, and I'm gonna take you through the warm up. So I always warm up in a hoodie, put up layers, uh, so you can get warm quicker. And I always start with five minutes of cardio, so let's jump on the elliptical. All right, guys, so I thought I'd talk you through my warm-up, which I've been doing for the last two years for my upper body workouts. To be honest with you, the lower body workouts, it doesn't really change too much, except there are less like upper body movements, like the rotator cuffs and scapular retraction. But cardio, I always start with five to 10 minutes on any sort of cardio machine. I usually go on the elliptical because it's good full body warm up, it's very low impact, especially if you're about to go hit a heavy weight session. Um, I used to just walk in, go straight into like benching, like maybe do like a plate to warm up, but this really helps prime you and warms you up. So I'd always recommend doing some cardio to get the blood flowing. I usually take my hoodie off after that because I'm a bit hot. Um, I usually aim to burn around 75 to 100 calories on that warm up. So this stretch right here may be specific to me, but if anyone has any lower back problems, this is hip flexor and psoas stretching. So the tiny muscle in between uh, your hips can you if it's tight can lead to lower back pain and that's what i've had over the last couple of years so i've had a very tight lower back from like you know deadlifting squats and if i do this stretch so basically i'm trying to drive the glutes forward stretching all your hip flexors reaching up and then coming around you know and keeping it dynamic through creating some sort of motion through twisting it and this relieves so much pain in my lower back so meaning that i can go into anything and straight after that, I do some like twists, so spine twists. I try and get the back of my heel to my hand. You'll, if you do this and you haven't done it before or you haven't done it for a while, your back should crunch so nicely. It's like doing, giving yourself a self-chiropractic session. But I really, really enjoy doing that. Uh, and then I just do the front because, again, your back, your lower back, um, I actually do this for my lower body sessions as well, but any upper body session, you are supporting a lot of movements through your lower back, so I'd always recommend doing something like this. Then I move on to the rotator cuffs. Now, you see a lot of people doing it uh, with the cables. You can do it with the cables, but you see a lot of people doing it uh, just standing and then to your side. But if you're doing rotator cuffs with a dumbbell or anything like that, you should always have your elbow supported. So I'm supporting myself on my knee here. You can support yourself at a preacher bench, on a bench, but just make sure when you're doing the rotator cuff movement that your elbow is supported as you won't be causing as much strain because you will just tire out your shoulders through having to stabilize without it there. Then after that, I go into a band overhead extensions and rotations. Honestly, you get such a good stretch on these. Uh, I always quite like to keep things dynamic before training. Um, dynamic is moving rather than keeping like static stretching. You want to save the static stretching for after or intra sets. Um, but yeah, doing all of these really helps open up my shoulders and making sure that they're warm and ready to take the load. Now, you can use any resistance band you like. You can use a bar, but I definitely recommend doing these. Now, it doesn't matter what workout you're doing, but any upper body workout, it all incorporates your shoulders and back, and I recommend doing this. Now, the last but not least is probably the most important one is the scapular retraction. Now, you should hang on a bar and basically just focus on retracting your scapula because this is the most important thing in 
training, in any sort of workout, you need to be able to retract your scapula, disengage your shoulders for maximum efficiency when you're training. I recommend doing everything for two to three sets and this will bulletproof your body ready for any workout. Top's the wrong way around. <laughs> um, so yeah guys, that is my body warm up. So what I do after this, I'm feeling pretty warm. The blood is pumping, takes about 10 to maximum 15 minutes, depending on how many sets you want to do. So what I'm going to go do now, we're training chest and back. So before I go straight into my heavy weights, I'm going to perform a few weights about 30% and build up. I do usually about one to two warm up sets, as in like going, for example, 60 kilos and 100 kilos, then doing my working weight of 140 on bench. Um, and then you're ready to go, you're pretty fired. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this little warm up. If you do try it, let me know and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.